Hello, alrighty, so it's time for the Resonator Bank. The Resonator Bank, we're going to go through all the controls as we usually do in these effects videos. And then I'm going to show you some weird stuff that you can do with it. So, first of all, what is the Resonator Bank? Uh, the Resonator Bank is a bank of resonators, which is just the title set the other way around. But, um, it's actually very simple to understand. So, essentially what you've got here is basically like an EQ. Um, but the bands get way more resonant, so they kind of ring out. I guess you could liken them to EQ bands here, and you can set where they are in the frequency range. You can set how loud they are, and you can also set the resonance here. And when they're really resonant, they kind of ring out, so you can put a very short signal through them, and it kind of delays it out. So the resonator bank is really supposed to be used to make um, sort of physical modeling type sounds like... Uh, kalimbas and bell sort of sounds and stuff like that and uh, it's pretty good at doing that so you've got six bands here and these kind of react to the signal that you put in so before i show you some of the sounds we can make with this let's just go over some of the controls so what i've got running through the resonator bank here is just a short burst of pink noise that sounds like this and then when i put it through the resonator bank Okay, so I'm hitting different keys here, but the pitch isn't changing because we haven't got the key track and turned on by default. So if I turn on the key track and all of a sudden... It tracks pitch with the key I hit. Now our white noise isn't changing pitch, so all this change in pitch is the actual resonators within here. So let's just focus on one for now and we'll go through all the controls. So right now we just got this low one. And let's bring it up in the big view here so we can kind of see what we're doing. So, basically what's happening here is as we drag this up, its starting position is going to be higher and higher in the frequency range, and as we drag it down, it's going to be lower and lower. Then if we drag it down here, we go from not audible at all to very audible, and we can also control its resonance here. So at, if, at the very, very top of resonance, it kind of rings out. And if we also make the global resonance control here, so here's the global controls, you can see right over here beside the resonance, we've got the global resonance. If we also make that really long, it goes on for a really long time, as long as you'd need. And then if we pull it back, it's really, really short. So you can go from these really clicky kind of sounds that are really tight to really long. So with one band here, it's not really that exciting. Um, the, the controls for all the bands are exactly the same. So here you've got your frequency, but we can also access this by just dragging over and back on the actual band up here in the large menu or in the small menu down here. Then we've also got the volume down here as well, but again, we can just change that by dragging up and down. And the exact same controls for every band here, you can also control them globally. So let's bring a few bands in here. You can see we're kind of covering the frequency spectrum here. You can control the frequency globally here with this global frequency knob. And that'll control them all at once. You can also control the global resonance here, as I said. And you can also control the global volume. So that makes each of the bands louder or quieter. Then you've got your key track up here, as I explained. Without that, it's just going to play the same sound every time, which you might want sometimes. And we've got a glide, which would glide between the notes. Then you got a mix knob, and that's it. That's all the controls for the resonator bank. So I've just got a white noise signal going through it right now, which is basically every uh, frequency at once. And what these do is they just accentuate certain frequencies and make them ring out. It's very simple. So let's just make that short again. So we're mainly here in the resonators. And you can see you can get completely different sounds depending on the way that you've got these set. So let's make them really resonant. And of course, their volume in relation to each other as well. Mm -hmm. 
and also the 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 bandwidth or the resonance here. So you can see right up at the top, it's really resonant. It's it's one frequency. And then as you bring the resonance down, it starts to get broader, but it also rings out less. So essentially what each of the bands are doing is this, is you're increasing the volume of the band. And then as you bring in that bandwidth, you're making them really tight and then as you're increasing it you're making it more like that so it's more capturing a frequency range rather than one specific tone the only difference between this and the bands on the eq is that with the resonator bank they kind of ring out so now that we've heard what the resonator bank does and uh, learned all the controls, let's have a look at what button different sources through it uh, sounds like. So we've got just a regular old sine wave here. So if I turn off the resonator bank, I've just got this really short burst of sine wave here. And then I turn on the resonator bank. And we get a more bell-like sort of texture. So. It's pretty good for getting like metallic bell key sounds. And if I bring up the velocity here, I've got it so that higher velocities are triggering these high bands more, so it sounds more clicky. So depending on how you've got the band set here, it's going to make it sound a lot more either inharmonic and sort of metallic if you've got them set at weird intervals, or you could set them at musically pleasing inf intervals that are, say, in your key or that are uh, relative to the pitch you're playing, and they're going to sound a little bit less uh, metallic or, or inharmonic. So instead of just putting a sine wave through it, let's hear the difference if we make the wave more complicated. So I'm just going to FM this sine wave with another sine wave. So it's not just how you've got the resonator set, it also makes a big difference what you're kind of passing through the resonator bank. So let's also just pass through that pink noise again. Let's make it a bit shorter than that. So you can see, if you pass longer stuff through it, like noise for instance, instead of just sounding like noise now, it has a, a discernible pitch to it. And that's gonna sound again dramatically different based on how we set these. Or we can pull back the decay and make the noise really short. And that's going to bring us back to that sort of bell territory again. So you can also put sort of weird stuff through it. So I've got this snare loaded into the sampler and I've got the position frozen so that I can move through it manually like this. And let's just put it through here. It's a good way of making like weird ambient effects and uh, soundscapes and stuff like that. So let's hear this. Maybe we even want to change where the resonators are. And we'll get a completely different sound. So those are some sort of traditional uses for the resonator bank and, you know, the basics of how it works. But you can use it to do... Um, cooler, more interesting stuff than that. So let's have a look at a couple of uses that maybe aren't necessarily its intention, but it's really good for. So um, if we turn on the resonator bank here, so I've got this kick that's kind of weak. Doesn't really have a whole lot of low end to it. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the resonator bank to boost the base of the kick to give it a little bit more weight. So let's turn it on the resonator bank now. So all that I'm doing here is I'm using a modulator, the envelope follower, and that's following the envelope of our kick drum. And then I'm using that to control the volume of the lowest band here, which I've got set to the fundamental of the kick. So see when the kick comes in here, you can kind of see where the bass note of the kick is. And all I'm doing is I'm using this modulator to increase the volume of it. So while the kick is lasting, there's a bit more bass in there. I can increase the volume of that and make it ridiculously loud. And of course you can mix the effect in as you want. So there's the original. There's a kind of overmixed. So it's a good way of adding stuff like that. It's also a good way of adding like resonant notes to snares and stuff like that if you want to sort of boost the fundamental and have it carry on for a while um, and ring out. The resonator bank is a great way of doing that. You can also um, kind of put it in a more complicated setup here where you're not just using the resonator bank. So here's a, I've got a transient shaper. So this is what I'm trying to get across when I'm doing these... Um, tutorials about the stock devices and bitwig is that you can put them all together and you can create something way cooler so you could make your own transient designer where you have control over different resonating frequencies of your kick drum and you can also you know say distort the attack independently and then have more bass come in for the sustain phase so let's just look at a really simple setup here that i've got with the transient controller So what I've got here is in the attack phase here, I'm using it to boost one of the frequencies so that the click comes through more. And then in the sustain phase here, I'm boosting up the bass frequency. And um, I'm also using the attack phase over here just to add a little bit of noise into the mix with bit eight. And then I've got that mixed in with the original signal. So you can hear it, you can completely transform the sound. So that's just an example of how you can chain the resonator bank with other effects to maybe do some mixing stuff or enhance sounds that you already have. So the next thing I've got here is an example of modulating the resonator bank's parameters um, in order to make something simple more interesting. So I've got this pad sound here. Let me turn off the effects chain I've got on it. So it's just like a triangle wave with some white noise over it. And then let's turn on the resonator bank chain. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, I have two resonator banks here that are set a little bit differently, but more or less the same. They're in an effects layer and one is panned left and one is panned right. So I've got a tool at the end here that's panning them. So uh, where's the tool? Tool's here. So the tool is panning one left and one right. And then I can set them slightly differently. So the second one here, let's just change the settings up. So we get kind of a nice stereo difference going on there. So yeah, all I'm doing in terms of modulation here is I've got this LFO here and it's uh, just gently changing the pitch of some stuff. Then we've got this Parsec here and the Parsec is set to this uh, sixth band here. And what it's doing is it's basically just running through different uh, frequencies in like a sequence. So you can see the sixth band sort of moving around in a sequence. I've also got it set here to the gain so they're just set at different values so it's kind of jumping in and out then i've got an envelope follower here and this is bringing up the overall pitch of all of the bands so let's accentuate that a bit just giving it a bit of extra movement over time And then these random modulators here are just uh, randomly slightly changing the 
amplitude and uh, frequency a tiny bit of each of the bands. So they're just all kind of moving very slightly. And obviously the random modulators are doing different stuff on the left and right side. So you're getting some nice stereo. And then obviously we could change some of the settings around here on the left and right side to get some cool effects. So yeah, that's just an example of using the modulators and, you know, putting it in stereo um, and uh, doing cool stuff like that. So the next thing I wanted to show you is just using the resonator as like a sort of a resonant EQ to change things before you're going to put them through a distortion. So here I've got just like a regular saw wave bass with some white noise on it. And then if I turn on my resonator bank chain here. So I'm just amplifying certain frequencies before they go through the distortion here. So if I change what frequencies I've got accentuated, it's gonna drastically change the sound. So let's change it around a bit. So yeah, you can just um, amplify different frequencies and then when you put them through distortion, because of the way the resonator works, they all kind of distort against each other and it just makes the sound way rougher. <laughs> So just continuing on with that idea of sort of using it as an EQ or as a filter, um, you can also, so I've just got another saw wave here. So you can also say, set up your own custom filters using the resonator bank. So I've got um, an XY effects here and I've got a resonator just with different settings in each one. <laughs> And then you can kind of move through them and make your own vowel filters. Uh, just one thing to note here as well, um, the resonator bank, if you've got the resonance turned up a lot, sometimes it's got to ring out after your note's finished. So to, to avoid that, what I've got is the ADSR for my sawtooth here. I've just got it attached to the mix of the resonator bank so it turns off when the note is finished. And I've got that done on each of these. So you can see when the note goes off, the mix is going down. And then obviously, if you change the values of these, you're going to get a significantly different sound. So let's change A as well. And now we've got a completely different set of filters. So yeah, you can make your own sort of vowel vowel formant filter ting things um, using that. Then I've got another one here, which is... Yeah, let me just open that up there. So this is how you can um, do sort of formant shaping with the resonator bank. So I've just got an um, envelope here attached to the frequencies and basically what creates a formant is when you've got one frequency that's boosted and another frequency that's boosted and you bring them together kind of like your mouth does and that makes it into a formant. So you can see I've got these frequencies coming together here. And what's good is you can have as many as you want. So you can have multiple sets of formants going and get sort of more interest in form and sounds. And then I've got another macro set up here just so I can move them within the frequency range. So So yeah, that's just another example of making your own filters with the resonator bank. So this is just an example of chaining uh, different effects together to make your own custom filters. So I've got just a resonator bank here and I'm just moving the global uh, frequency. Now I could attach this also and have another band moving independently. Let's say we wanted to have six moving down. We could do that as well. 
and get kind of an interesting movement between the different frequencies. And then I've got that just on front of a, a low pass filter. It says high pass, but it's actually low pass. So I've created like sort of a multi resonance low pass filter, basically. And that's going through a little bit of saturation. And I can set up these resonances however I want. I could have them weight it more in the high frequencies than the low frequencies. Or I could do them post the uh, low pass filter. And that would sound completely different as well. You could even throw a band pass filter in there in parallel or a comb or whatever you want to do and make your own. Um, different kind of filters using the resonator bank. The other thing I wanted to show you here um, that's a bit less probably generally useful and just a bit of fun, but uh, you can do it nonetheless. And I suppose usable sounds are in the eye of the beholder. So um, I just said I'd show this off as well. You can also uh, frequency modulate the individual resonances. So I've got a few different resonators here that are put up to full volume, because why not? And then I'm frequency modulating them by different oscillators here in the grid. So I've got them going through a modulator out and then those are attached to the frequency of the bands. So I've got a couple of wavetable oscillators and stuff going on here. And then when I hit the button, so let me just turn off the resonator bank. So it's just a saw wave. And then you turn on the resonator bank. And you get this. And then obviously if I change the relationship in here between these, uh, we get different sounds because they're doing FM, so. And then, um, obviously, if I change the, the oscillator itself. One thing about the resonator bank that's cool is if you're putting stuff through it, um, even if it's an LFO, when the LFO re-triggers, it's still sending a single signal through the resonator bank. So you can do cool stuff like this. So let's, let's pitch this saw wave way down. And you can see every time it's starting a new cycle, it's still going through the resonator bank. that to make cool effects and I've got it set to stereo here so you're getting weird stereo going on there so yeah you can get fairly mental uh, sounds doing that somebody's gonna find a use for that I guarantee you um, but yeah you can do that um, go, go do it and see if you come up with something notable <laughs> Uh, so the last thing I wanted to show you is just using the resonator bank on effects. Um, so I'm just going to show this really quickly because um, it's kind of obvious. You just put it on an effect and see if it sounds good. But um, a couple of particularly decent ones. Particularly decent? Is that a bit of an oxymoron? I don't know. But uh, let's just turn this down because it's gone awry. Uh, one thing to say is if you're going to be putting uh, the resonator bank into the feedback loop of something... Uh, in this case, the delay, you need to be careful because it uh, can raise the volume and it can make the delay go on forever and get really distorted, which you may or may not want. You probably do want it. Let's pull that down as well. So now I'm just going to show you what it sounds like if we put this through a delay. So here's what that sounds like. As you can see, over time, it kind of disperses into like tonal noise. And if we push it even harder through there, it's going to start to basically self resonate. And it will very, very quickly get distorted. It's cool to put it on delay effects, but you do need to be careful about. Um, it generating a feedback loop and getting all distorted, so uh, don't say I didn't warn you. And uh, another thing that's cool on is the reverb, so you can kind of create tonal reverbs. Um, I'll just show you an example of that now. And uh, depending on the way you've got these set, it will affect, kind of freezes the reverb and then turns it into sort of a nice tonal sound. So here it is. <laughs> Thank you.
let's just hear it with a different frequency setup so let's just randomly set these some other way and then we'll try that again <laughs> So then again, depending on how you've got it set, you're gonna get drastically different results. So you can use that to like freeze the reverb and make it really tonal and ambient, or you can use it to um, just really subtly change the character of the reverb on a regular reverb as well. That sounds good doing both things. So yeah, that's, um, that's pretty much everything for the resonator bank. Uh, I hope that that was helpful to you or at the very least didn't ruin your day or ruin anything. Um, thanks a million. And also, uh, like it as well. Give it one of them as well, too. Thanks.